We need people who will put people first. People should be our priority. And I'm convinced that we can move to a level where the public interest becomes the first and better interest. If a greater number of our leaders work in that direction, two, three, or four leaders like our Baba can make a whole lot of difference. Dr. Kofi Annan, the late United Nations Secretary General, once said that we need to think of the future and the planet that we're going to leave for our children. In trying to find solutions to our crisis, it is important to emphasize the significance of the youth population of a nation. Because most of you graduating today are due to join the teeming youth population out there. And as you know, if a nation's youth population is educated, healthy, and productive, rest assured that the nation will grow. And if all variables, all other variables are added up, you can be confident that the nation's future will be prosperous. So I charge you to be audacious. For the best time to dare is now, the time of your youth. It's the best time to prepare for life and to take risks. Mark Zuckerberg was 19 when he founded Facebook, the network in sight. Bill Gates was 20, as at the time he began Microsoft. Apple's Steve Jobs was 21. Google's Larry Page was 25. eBay's Omidyar was 28. And Larry Ellison of Oracle was 32 at the time he came up with Oracle. So we cannot afford to waste our youthful energy. The energy are not just significant for national growth, but helpful for self-development. And as Dr. Mo Ibrahim, founder of the Mo Ibrahim Foundation for Good Governance in Africa, once remarked, Africa is a continent of young people and our demography is completely different from the rest of the world. Within three generations, he said, 41% of the world's youth will be Africans. And by 2030, Africa's labor force will be larger than that of China. And further still, by 2035, it will be larger than that of India. This is a wonderful resource for our country, for our continent, and for our country. And if this resource is scaled and employed and harnessed, then the sky is the limit. Therefore, I'm urging and arguing that the youth of this nation can be turned into a force for the resolution of our economic conundrum. If, and only if, as I said, if their potentials are harnessed. The youth of Nigeria could be one way out of our conundrum against the backdrop of the clamor for generational change in leadership. Our challenges, our conundrum, which are obvious in the fields of politics, economics, and our sociology, are not insurmountable. With the right leadership at all levels, our nation will be galvanized and propelled to the right path for the needed redemption and for the quest for national cohesion and transformation, which we now urgently deserve. I congratulate our new graduates-to-be, but may I remind you that your journey has just begun because you will definitely meet with diverse challenges. 
and they will task your imagination, shake your faith, shake your patriotism, and you always feel like giving up. Do not be daunted. I encourage you, I encourage you to have faith in your country and defend it. All around education entails the ability to use training in your chosen field of study to proffer solutions to societal challenges. The future of Nigeria, our Nigeria, our dear country, rests on you. Every of your effort in deconstructing Nigeria's conundrum for national integration, cohesion, and transformation would position you for national greatness. So again, I challenge you all to see any obstacles you would ever confront in the future as a springboard to contributing your quota. As I am most certain that you already know it, you, a board graduate, are the true and real panacea for Nigeria's conundrums. There's a bright light at the end of the tunnel. Let's go for it. Class of 2018, congratulations. Congratulations to you all.